Lately, there seems to be more and more confusion uh, in regards to what stem cell therapies are best for a particular injury or for a particular condition that we're trying to treat. And although there's not a given hard fast rule, there are some concepts that if understood really helps to be able to apply this technology in the best ways to be able to get the best results for any given situation. Uh, when dealing with, uh, with technology such as bone marrow therapies, bone marrow stem cell therapies have been shown to be effective but you are limited by the ability of those bone marrow stem cells to be harvested in sufficient numbers to really have a dramatic effect. In addition, bone marrow stem cells injected into a joint space can provide significant relief from the standpoint of decreasing inflammation and helping to restore blood supply to the area, but not so much regrowing or repairing cartilage loss or in the example where there's a bone on bone deterioration, being able to remove that scar tissue that's developed on the bone surface, being able to restore the blood supply to that bone surface so the cartilage can actually grow and develop. Another really confusing part for patients is why are bone marrow stem cells so heavily used here in the United States where in other countries it's, it's virtually unheard of to use bone marrow stem cells. You have to understand that bone marrow stem cells have been around for a long time. And when it comes to the FDA and the policy regarding stem cell studies, a lot of those bone marrow stem cell studies can be more easily done because the bone marrow research is so dated and is, is so uh, extensive. Just because it's extensive and just because we've been using it for a long time doesn't mean that it's the best solution. That is why we've seen in other countries where newer technologies such as the stem cell paste have been widely adopted and approved that those countries have adopted to that new technology and are focusing on using things like stem cell paste for repair versus using older technologies such as bone marrow therapies. The stem cell paste provides us with that ability in that it provides a structure or an organization to allow the stem cells to form complex structures such as uh, resurfacing cartilage, breaking down scar tissue, growing in new blood vessels. Uh, imagine liquid floating around within a joint and those liquid cells trying to come together to be able to form chains or to be able to form bridges to be able to fill in gaps where there's damaged tissue. It's far easier for the body to do that with the stem cell paste where the cells are adhered to directly to the joint surface allowing for that complex rebuild to, rebuilding to occur. So we've seen that if in young patients who have young healthy bone marrow stem cells and have very little damage or very little trauma, bone marrow may be a wonderful resource for them. But when we're dealing with patients over the age of 50 who have significant decrease in their bone marrow potential just because of their age, or when you're dealing with even younger patients who have significant damage or significant deterioration, the stem cell paste really has shown to, to be the better, the better product or their better technology for that type of injury. Mm -hmm.